In this mini-series, I would like to show you what modular synths are and how to use and play them. In the first episode, we will focus on something really basic, such as cases, modules, cables, and power supply, and also sound and sources of audio. In the second episode, we will focus on control signals. Also, we will talk about audio modifiers and passive modules. In the third episode, we will do some patching. We will talk a bit about tips and also about audio connectivity. First of all, let's talk about a brief history. First synthesizers were really, really big, like a room size big. But the tendencies were to make it smaller, more comfortable, to carry it around. So it took around 30 years and this guy, Dieter Depfer, came up with the idea of making it more compatible and also in the size that you can carry it around. And this kind of format is called 3U Rec. And that's what we're going to talk about. It's a format of a synthesizer that can be modular. It uses the same walls to power different components from different manufacturers. So it opens unlimited options how to create your unique instrument and of course unique sound. Keep in mind that most of the technical details are like in other synths, but the real difference is that you have a clean space which you can modify and connect as you prefer. You just need to follow the basic rule which we will discuss in the third episode. So we have these components called modules, which can vary in width, but they will have exactly the same high. They use power of plus minus 12 volts and plus 5 volts, and they are powered from the bus board attached to the case with the individual cables. So we can make changes easily without replacing the whole instrument and it's tremendously flexible. You can take advantage of an analog or digital approach as you desire. All the connection is possible through the cables. In other synths they are too but hardwired and hidden so you cannot make changes in pre patch pads. In modular we have monojack cables called patch cables. You can also find stack cables or hopscotch. As you can see on this spaceship panel, modules have holes for inputs and outputs. And that's how we create the path of the sound. There is no rule for labeling the inputs or outputs, but usually you can see that the outputs are in this gray area or it's written there. When you don't know, you can use the manual. I like to think of it as a brain chain reaction in a way that you need to connect together everything what is on the way. If you forget something, you cannot hear the sound or the sound you desire. Every time I'm making a signal patch, I need to go from one module's output to another module's input, etc. Another reason why you cannot hear the sound is that the cable might be broken. You can find out that you take the cable and you put it directly in the mixer from some kind of oscillator. So let's say I would pick this oscillator from this output and put it in the input of the mixer. And when I can hear the sound, that means the cable is okay and the patch was wrong. Or you can use a multimeter to check if the cables are okay. 
You can see that the colors and the length of the cables are different. You can use them to differ your path. And now it's time to talk about signals in modular. There are two types, audio signals and control signals. Audio signals are essential for hearing. So in our path, they will be the first or at least somewhere at the beginning of the patch. And the control signals are the ones changing the parameters of the sound. Audio signals refers to a frequency. High frequency means that they are changing quite quickly and we perceive that as a high pitch or we can call it a note. Low frequency means that sound waves in the air are changing slowly and we perceive that as a low pitch. The most common audio signal is from oscillator. It can give you basic sound wave such as sine or triangle or sawtooth or square. But it would be boring to have oscillators just with these basic waves. So of course manufacturers has various types of oscillators with different sounds like this braids from mutable instrument. And it's important to keep in mind that oscillators are always on, so they wouldn't stop. And that's why you need to use envelopes and amplifiers with oscillators. But we will talk about this in the next episode. Usually you can find their CV inputs to changing frequency, timbre or color. And then we have noise generators. And they generate noises, right? When you look at the oscilloscope, you can see this wave is kind of mess. And when you listen to it, you can think of a waterfall or raining in the forest. These noises are really cool for making percussive sounds. The most common noises are pink and white. Special kind of VCO is LFO which stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. Its frequencies are so low, so human ear cannot hear them, but we use it for some modulations, and that's why it stands somewhere in the middle, so we cannot think of it as a sound source, really. But it's really connected to the VCO, so let's check this. This is a sound source, and LFO is changing the sound of the sound source. You can tell by the LED light. And you can play with the rate so it can be slower or faster. And if you look next to the LED light, there is a shape of the LFO. The difference between sample and sample player is easy. With sampler you can record with an output and the audio signals can be played continually or they can be triggered by a CV connection. But sample players can play pre-recorded sound from their micro SD card. You just download it there and in some modules you can also modulate the sound. So let's check this one. All the sounds that you're listening to are from the tiny micro SD card which is there. And by tweaking the knobs, I can change the parameters of the sound. So I can play with the tempo, or I can switch between the samples. And what about drum and synthesizer voices? Well, they work kind of the same. Let's have a look at this drum module. It's a module that can create a drum sound, let's say kick or tom, and it does not require any other modules. Except it needs to be triggered with something, usually with a sequencer. 
Synthoid is similar, but it can create a complete monophonic synthesizer voice. Modulator is a synth where you're creating the sound by patching the cables into the inputs and outputs. It's divided into different components called modules. Each of the module is connected to the bus board where it's getting its energy. And when you connect modules through the cables, you are creating a signal path. We have two types of signals, audio and control signals. Audio refers to sound and sound sources such as oscillators, noise generators, sample and sample players, pre-made voices or external sources.